Hello guys and girls and welcome to a brand new episode of Really Good. This is Mac Mondays and today we are going to briefly demonstrate Pixelmator. Now in a previous episode I said that Pixelmator was the perfect alternative to Adobe's Photoshop. Instead of paying two to three hundred pounds for photo editing software, Pixelmator is the perfect alternative for you to edit your images efficiently and professionally and it, it will provide you with a semi-professional look and come standardized with the tools that are already available in Adobe Photoshop itself. Um, I've been using Pixelmator for a long time now. I, I guess three to four years and it hasn't disappointed me. So let's just briefly run through a demo that will show you just how similar it is to Adobe's Photoshop. This app costs around £20 in the UK. It's available in the Mac App Store to download whenever you want. So let's get started. Now I'm going to open an existing image and use my own face for demonstration purposes. Uh, here we go. Okay, for starters, it is created. I'm going to move this toolbar. See the flexibility you have here in like moving tool bars across the screen. If it's in your way, you can move it to this side or up, down, wherever you want on the screen. So it provides you with the flexibility of using your the entire screen real estate so let's get to editing shall we now when you first open a image in pixelmator by default it creates that image as a background layer but we don't really want to do that why? Because when you have an image that is background layer, you can not really edit with it as, as much as you want to. Uh, at some point, you may fuck up during process and you, f and you may find that you are unable to undo that mistake. So to prevent that from happening, I suggest we open a new canvas. That is what I wanted to do. I suggest we open a new canvas here and copy and paste the image we have. Yeah. And to copy and paste an image, all you need to do is make sure that you have this layer selected and you go to edit, select all, edit again and copy. See, it indicates it's been copied. Now to paste, I'm sure you guys already know this, but let's just run through it anyway to paste all you have to do is make sure you click on the white background and click edit and paste 
You can also um, use Command C for copy and Command V on your keyboard to paste. Um, but for demonstration purposes, I thought it would be better and easier to use the drop down menus so you can see what I'm doing. Um, anyway, let's continue. Um, cropping an image is simple. Click and drag. You don't need to hold the shift button for this. It highlights the section that you hovered over and if it's exactly how you wanted it to be, press enter on your keyboard. To change the colors of your images, all you need to do, actually, you can go into color adjustments here. Here you have a choice exposure the image where it brightens the image a lot more you can double click to move the slider I don't think you can actually drag levels here is where you can adjust shadows of the picture so when you move to the left it lightens and when you move to the right it darkens giving you that sapir effect that you normally get in professional photography the more you move either side the more effect it, it's going to have on the picture so that's kind of self-explanatory anyway and uh, there are other um settings here that you can choose from you can adjust the hue uh, which plays around with the contrast and the color itself um saturation here you can see i've moved the slider and it kind of gives you a bright red effect or helps you to get that um black and white effect that is normally yeah what i use for most of my pictures anyway you see there's a nice effect right there actually i'm going to keep this for now um there's even a a setting for black and white if you even click on here you can adjust the brightness levels actually i'm going to do that adjust the contrast and the grain i think i'm gonna leave the grain as is because it's not necessary at all um contrast is fine maybe a little more brightness there we go i'm gonna minimize this to avoid confusion and go full screen here actually uh Okay, what I've just clicked on is the gradient tool. Now, this is pretty good for color effects. Allow me to create a new canvas just to show you how this works. And I'll even copy and paste my existing image onto it just to... Uh, show you where is it gone come out of full screen here there we go 
the gradient tool is is pretty cool. It manipulates the colors and creates almost a shape or a line, mostly diagonal, and it gives you a choice of two to three colors to choose from and you can mess around with the angle that the colors are placed in or like you see this white line here you can manipulate the angle of that white line and lessen it by dragging it to the right or expose it even more by drag dragging it to the left. Now you see here, you have two versions of two colors. One's a darker version of a purple and the other is a light version, uh, which, you know, presents contrast. You have a panel of colors to choose from here. You can go for blues and, you know, play around with that. And, oh no, what's this rainbow effect like? Okay. That's quite pretty. You see that um, point in the center there? That crosshair that you see on my cursor manipulates that point. So the further I go out, the more it exposes itself. So if I click and drag, you will see that the colors are slightly changing. And if I just you know change the angle, the central point also changes its position. There are other colors here. What's this like? Okay. I'm gonna keep this actually. Cause I I like the range of colors here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna keep this like this. You have a bucket where you can choose solid colors to cover the entire background. So if I wanted, I could make this kind of orangey red. Ah, uh, you see, it's not allowing me to fill the, uh, oh yes it is. If I click and drag, I can fill the entire canvas. It wasn't allowing me to do that before because it had the gradient effect applied to it. So let's change the colors again because I want, yeah, okay. This is good. The slice tool sections the pictures. So if you wanted to, I guess, color certain points of the picture, you can do that, but let's just try that actually. See? I've dyed my hair pink. I have actually dyed my hair red once, like a 
chestnut sort of colour. Actually, let's go for that colour to uh, demonstrate, if, yeah, to make it more realistic here. Um, no, not that colour. A little darker than this, actually. Okay. I'm going to open this other panel here because uh, I can't get the red that I want and it's annoying me. Let's just, uh, here we go. Now, this was the kind of red that I had it. This is exactly how I had it, but it was highlights. Let's just erase this segment here just by my glasses using the erase tool. Now you can manipulate the size of the uh, cursor here by using this slider. And the smaller you have it, the less area you will cover. 